Good evening, hockey fans. Today is Thursday, January 17th, 2013. Welcome to the St. Louis Park Rec Center for tonight's boys varsity hockey game between the Panthers of Rochester Century and the Red Knights of Benil St. Margaret's. It's finals week for the Red Knights, so we'll see if that has any impact on the kids' play tonight. I think they've been in, fi in finals since uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and then uh, tomorrow is the last day of finals. This is Michael Hawkins. I'll be joined later by John Lebowski uh, to broadcast for TV 16, St. Louis Park's community network. Let's set the table, should we, for tonight's game, and we'll start by looking at Century's program. The Rochester squad enters tonight's game with a 3-12 record, which is really hard to believe when you remember that the Panthers have played in the Minnesota State Hockey Tournament in three of the past eight years. They play in the Big Nine Conference with other Southern Minnesota teams. The teams, I'm sorry, the school's enrollment is 1,275. I had a chance to talk with head coach Josh Klingfuss of the Panthers to get his take on the upcoming game and to see what he thinks will be the keys to a good game for his squad. First of all, he said, we really have to come and compete. The kids have been uh, getting discouraged and not putting out, but this is, this is a game. They had a great game on Tuesday night, and he's hoping to build on that. Secondly, as usual, most coaches say we got to stay out of the penalty box, but no St. Margaret's um, power play is phenomenal um, and much better than 15 or 20 percent, usually in the 25 to 30 percent range, and he wants to stay out of the box if they can. And he also wants to have his own power play going. He says we practiced a lot on power play and we would like to show, show what we've got. Uh, his team is made up of 14 sophomores out of the 20 kids on the team, uh, the 20 kids on the roster. So it's a real tough, tough, tough year for the, for the Panthers. On the other bench tonight is the home team, the Benilla St. Margaret's team from St. Louis Park. The Red Knights entered tonight's game with an 11-4 record for the season, having beaten number 16 Moundsview 8-2 and number 6 Minnetonka 5-1 in the past week. They are not in a conference this year, deciding instead to play on independent schedule so they can play the best the state has to offer. The Red Knights are currently ranked number four in the state, according to the most recent rankings from Let's Play Hockey. BSM's senior high enrollment is about 850. Tonight we will see some of the top players in the high school hockey world on BSM's first line. Number 12, Grant Bessie has 28 goals for the season, the highest in the metro area, and 14 assists to give him 42 points so far this year. Bessie is committed to play Division I hockey for Wisconsin next year. A line mate of his, number 27, Dan Labosky, uh, John, uh, who will be joining me later, is Dan's dad, leads the state with 31 assists. Lobo has committed to play the Division I hockey for Colorado College next season. Head coach Ken Pauley also gave us a moment before the game to give his perspective about the upcoming game and to enumerate what he thinks has to happen for his squad to be successful. First and foremost, he says, we have to move the puck. He's not so sure that the records, uh, the deceptive record of, of Century uh, really is, is a representative of where the team has been. So he wants to keep moving the puck. He says he wants to have his kids do a lot of sharing. He doesn't want anybody to come in and, and try to score 12 goals and let the rest of the team suffer. So he wants the kids to share, kids, the players to share. Also, as per usual, stay out of the penalty box. We'll be back uh, to look at the keys in the third period to see how each game plan is going. But right now, let's pause for public service announcements before we have the lineups. every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. Fact is, if you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. One in five Americans is likely to develop a form of skin cancer during their lifetime. That's why your best shot 
is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. It could be the save of a lifetime. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Back again, we'll be having the lineups. I'm joined tonight by John Lebowski. John is the uh, father of Dan Lebowski, number 27. So if you hear some prejudice comments, you'll know where they're coming from and why they're coming from them. Uh, both teams are lined up now, uh, getting ready for the introductions. Red Knights in red and white. Sentry looks like they're in navy blue and silver. Um, the JV team played earlier and the JV team won. So that's uh, a positive and maybe an omen for, to, for the varsity game. Colleen Schroeder is uh, starting it with the announcing, and she'll be starting announcing the visitors first. Mm -hmm. And for that, I'll, I'll turn it over to John, and as each player is introduced, John, you can, um, that, that's what the screen looks like, so okay. when they come yep. up, you'll yep. be able to sort of see what's happening. Uh, we're working tonight with sort of a disadvantage, ladies and gentlemen. There's only, we've only got um, one camera operator, and therefore we're not gonna be able to have um, any instant replay and sometimes the camera's gonna be off a little bit, but we'll do the best we can and see what we got. They've, we've got brand new equipment up here. Our location is just ideal right on the red line, so I think we're in pretty good shape. But, Colleen is starting to, uh, starting to get ready for the announcement. Here we go. Here we go, starting in goal for the Rochester Century Panthers, number 35, Eric Rollator. At left D, number 21, Reese Zamolak. At right D, number 24, Ryan Sheridan. At center, number eight, Jacob Roth. On his left wing, number four, Dalton Travis. And on his right wing, number 14, Andrew Boyson. Okay, now the rest and the rest of the Panther team. Now starting for the Red Knights, making his first start of the season, number one, Paul Lundberg. Paul's a senior, been with the program for four years, gets his first start tonight. Starting on left defense, number 17, Patrick Graham. Patrick's a captain, a senior. Peter Heimbold is number 15, and he is a... He's a freshman. He's a freshman. From Minneapolis. Minneapolis kid. Number 10 tonight is going to be Alec Bear. From St. Louis Park. From St. Louis Park. Left wing is Nate Meyer. Number 28, his brother is a basketball player a couple years ago for the Red Knights. And number 34, Seth Chumley. Chumley is a, a captain as well. He's a senior and been with the program actually for the last four years. We'll start the national anthem now and then we'll come in with uh, some more details of the game. Colleen Schroeder singing the national anthem. There are not very many people in the stands tonight, primarily I suspect because the uh, Red Knights are in finals. It's gonna be tough to stay up till 9, 10 o'clock at night and then get home uh, after the game and then do some studying. So 
Red Knights are ready to go uh, in a minute. John, what do they talk about in front of the net like that anyway? Well, they're getting they're getting prepared to start to start the game. And typically the captains will be the most vocal with that huddle. And they'll get everybody excited and ready to play. So they come out with a lot of energy. Um, we've had a problem at uh, Benil several games this year where uh, we started a little slowly, especially against St. Thomas Academy. So I think it's always important to get off to a really good start, and that's what they're trying to do. Gotcha. And both teams are doing the same, essentially the same thing? Okay. Yes. And that would be, the, the captains would be the ones who are doing the talking? Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, we're ready to drop the puck. Number 10, Alec Bear in the middle. So it's a, actually it's Benil St. Margaret's is starting the third line. Look at that. Benil St. Margaret's is starting the third line against the first line of the Panthers. It's going to be interesting, Mick, to see how Paul Lundberg does uh, today. This is his first varsity start. So I'm, right. sure, I'm sure he's uh, excited and maybe <laughs> a little nervous. I'm sure he is, too. He's played a couple of times. I noticed either one, the Red Knights have been far, far ahead or far behind. But at the same time, it's good to, it's good to get us starts. Yeah. And he's, he's been with the program for, for uh, four years, has he not? He has, and he, and, and he played a lot in the, uh, at the junior varsity level. Gotcha. That was Bear with the shot. Uh, not, it was off center, uh, off the net, of course. Patrick Graham. And icing. So we have our first whistle of the game, with, and we're only 33 seconds into the game, and Benil and uh, Rochester Century are changing lines. They try and keep their lines to about a minute or less to keep everyone fresh. Right. There are times, though, when the kids really go out long, a lot longer than they are, aren't they? They do. And then, that, and then that would be the reason. I got it. That's the reason for for icing it then. Yes. <laughs> just get, I don't care where the faceoff is, just get up there. Yeah. Well, so what have we got here? The first line? First line's out for, for a Benil uh, St. Margaret's right now. Sometimes you want to ice the puck if you're really tired and you need a line change. Right, right. At the National Hockey League level, interestingly enough, you can't ice. It's uh, they can actually call call a delay of game again. Really? Them. Yes. And and they do not allow a line change if you ice the puck. So wow, it doesn't really work at the NHL level. How about in college? What happens there? Same as high school? Um, college is sort of in the middle. You you cannot make a line change if you have iced the puck. Gotcha. Yep. Well, this makes a lot more sense than in the high school level, doesn't it? it to does. me, it does. Yes. If you're going to keep your your players fresh. So here's Benil's first first line. We're getting a number of shots here. Grant Bessie ready to shoot from the right side. Lebowski shot. Bessie's back. We're trying to put He's that goal on through. Net. Yep. Walking through. Graham and the Himbold. Lundberg is down on his knees and back up again. Here comes Graham. Whoa, not really. Here comes Graham. So Benilde is changing lines again. This is this their second line centered by Spencer Noss. Noss is number eight as we watch. The, as, here he is. He's got the puck right now. Interesting play. I've not seen this. I've not seen these formations in the past. Mm -hmm. Came to one of the practices last week, and the Red Knights were practicing their power play. And it's oh, here we go. Century's coming back up. Talk well, you know, about icing. Uh, talk yeah. about getting fresh legs. That's right. Century tends to as soon as they pass that red line to dump to dump the puck down into their offensive zone to allow a line change. Here's a quick shot. Oh boy, almost nasty. By Nick Austin. Another shot. Yep. By Peter Heinbold. 14.06 on the clock. What have we got? 18 is their, se is their second line and mm -hmm. our third. third line. Okay. Actually, it's our fourth line, isn't fourth it? Fourth line, yeah. Yep, with Zach, Zach, Zach Hale uh, Hale's out there, yep. Well, 
Well, most of the play has, has been in the Red Knights zone, but doesn't mean it's done anything. No, it's kind of slow, slow going in the in the early part of the game here. Yep. How important is rhythm? If you get if you get in a rhythm or not, does it make a difference? Or rhythm, does it? rhythm is very, very important, and and that's one of the main roles of coaches. And the coaches um, like to call to, to use their their timeout at the best possible moment, mm -hmm. and usually to to break up the rhythm of the other team gotcha. when they get on a roll. Gotcha. So it's actually twofold. One is to talk to my guys, but more importantly, or equally as important, to, to throw the rhythm. Sort of like a pitcher. Yes, um, that's right. Step out of the box, step out of the box, step out of the box, and you, you, you lose the rhythm. Yep. Now, interesting on the face-offs, you see Dan Lebowski, the left wing, he takes the face-offs because he's a left-hander on the left face-off circle. He wins that face-off with T.J. Moore. Yep. Here it is. There it is. No, oh. almost though. Nice save by the goaltender. <laughs> a lot of goalkeeping is uh, simply reflex, isn't it? You, it is. You, you can't, uh, yeah, you can't plan right. what you're going to do. It's just a matter of, whoa. Reaction. Right. The more saves that the goalies make, the more confident they are. Right, right. And the harder it is to score on them. Right. Dan Lebowski. There it now is. there's a shot. Oh, Grant, Grant Bessie had a good opportunity there. T.J. Moore with a yep. shot. Yep. Well, we're going to see a 10 to 1 shots in the first period, aren't we? Oh, we're going to see a lot. I had a statistic here talking about scoring by period. Yes. Here's there a, it is. Oh, oh, there's a goal. Is it? Yes, wow. it is. Yes. Yes, it that is. Was, that Look. was T.J. Moore, number 23, with a goal, and that was a nice assist from Dan Lebowski from behind the net. Yep. So Benil by by um, Benil St. Margaret's by period. Historically over the year, they've scored 25 goals in their first period to the opponent's 10. So two and a half to one ratio here. Let's see what we got. Taking the taking the centering there was Bear. So I'm back on the third line for the Red Knights. Yep, you, you called it, John. Yeah. 23 from 27. <laughs> Bessie gets an assist. Yeah. So that so the first goal of the game for Benel St. Margaret's was more from Lebowski and Bessie gets a second assist. What were you saying before the game? Uh, Bessie is the leading scorer in the metro area? Um, Grant, Grant Bessie leads the state Wow. And scoring for all Class 2A players. Wow. He also leads uh, Benil St. Margaret's in goal scoring and in total points. He has, really? over, he has over 200 points for his career. Wow. Now on the bench for the, uh, and behind the bench, I mean, is uh, Troy Riddle. I wonder where he comes in. I bet you he's, he's got to be up there, though, too, doesn't he? Or is he Bessie out trying him? Troy, um, <laughs> Bessie ranks first, first in, in uh, career scoring. No kidding. Troy, Troy Riddle ranks third with 165 points. Wow. And Dan Lebowski, it ranks fourth with 156 <laughs> points. So he's going to have a hard time here <laughs> passing his coach <laughs> in a few games. And try it. You couldn't uh, try. Try likes to see it happen, I bet, because oh, the yes. kids have got a goal that way. Yes. I remember when Riddle was playing, it was uh, always very fascinating. Just always a really high tempo, real fast, and boy, what a skater he was. Oh, he had a great uh, career for the Gophers, and he played professionally as well. Yep. So, good good shot by Chase Jungles. Johnny Austin with the puck. Jungles is the number 11, almost with yep. the shot. Yep. Jack Lawton, number three, back in the corner. I don't see number four on oh, my roster. Oh, there's a shot. You know? There was a great chance for Rochester Century, but Paul Lungberg came up big on that one. Is it possible 
for the uh, goalie, seeing that it's beyond, that it's going to be tight to kick the kick the net off, or is oh. that a, is that a penalty? <laughs> they say knocking the net off is the goalie's best best friend. <laughs> Not that they would do it intentionally. Not that they you. would do it, right? No. And their best, the, the best sound they can hear is the ping, right? Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nick, that's Nick Austin with the puck, trying to clear it uh, out of his defensive end. Austin, a freshman or a sophomore? He's he's a freshman. He's a freshman as well. Okay. Yes. He's actually mm -hmm. playing playing Bantams last year. Must have been a good must have been a good time for him then because he he really came up didn't he he did and he's doing he's doing really well Will Duda sophomore number 26 oh nice shot there by Chris Hickok Duda had two brothers playing Pat and John in the same year I remember one time announcing a game that the Dudas were playing and they scored and it was Duda from Duda. <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah. It's Nick Austin, the Ben Newhouse, up to Will Duda. Up to TJ Moore now. We're on a line change. Dan Lebowski. Oh, shoots wide. And he's back, he's back, back in his own. Yep. So now we're back to the Nilt's first line again. Have you guys seen uh, CC play? Been to one of their games or anything? Or have yes. you? Yes. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Oh, we have an offside. Offside, here. yeah. Offside on Bessie. Couldn't couldn't quite stay on side there. My son-in-law played for uh, St. Cloud State, and those were just really fun years from a spectator's point of view. Watching the the caliber play is is better, oh. I think, and faster than it is in high school. Yes, and you know, next year there's a lot of changes um, right. at the Division One level with That's right. uh, with leagues with the Gophers and uh, Wisconsin. Going to the new Big Ten Conference. Right. In fact, isn't uh, isn't this weekend the uh, last time the North Dakota and the Gophers are going to yes. play? Yes. Yes. It's the last schedule time. Unless they go into uh, unless they go into sections. Nice. Yeah. yeah, they could play in the final five playoffs. But yes. That's about it. So Benil keeping the pressure on, keeping it in their offensive zone. And they work the puck. They're cycling well. Bessie with the puck. Look Over at to that. Shot. Oh, wow. What a beautiful play. Nice stop <clears throat> by the goaltender there for Rochester Century. Are, goals, are uh, plays like this um, programmed in practice, or are they just uh, because the kids have played so, so long together, they just see it happening and just pass it that way? Yeah, Mick, you want your lines to develop chemistry so that they like each other and they complement one another. And you they trust to, each other. Yes. And then eventually they learn exactly how they play, how right. they cycle, and where they're going right. to be. Right. And you can almost then have no-look passes right. uh, because you know that your teammate will be there. Well, but <laughs> number 14 for Century didn't have much of a chance that he... No. <laughs> Three came down on him. That was Andrew Boyson. Seth, Seth Chumley with the puck. Back to Meyer. Meyer's a junior. Chumley's a senior. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a yeah. nice scene. Who do, you, who do you look at in the section as is, is going to be the toughest team to get through? Tonka or, or Edina? Or? Well, section, section 6 AA is consistently the toughest section in the state. And typically every year, the, the, the final four in that section will be rate, ranked in the top seven in the entire state. Wow. So um, that really is. If you were seeding them right now, I think you'd have to take uh, Wyzetta and Benilt, uh, one, two, and then Minnetonka, three, and Eden Curry, four. But uh, and but Edina, Edina's not in, in the section, no. evidently. Okay. No. Okay. The, the, but, section, but they were a year or two ago, or no? No. No? Okay. No. My mistake. Yeah. <clears throat> Their toughest competition is Burnsville and Bloomington Jefferson and maybe prior uh, prior lake. Here's Look a good at opportunity. That. Oh. Wow. Great chance. Chase Jungles to Spencer Noss. Whistle blows because. Um, what happened? I think they called a player in the crease. Gotcha. Okay. So they'll move the face off all the way down. Yep. 
7.09 left on the clock. Mm -hmm. The problem there on the pass from Jungles is Spencer uh, Noss was already in the crease right. when he received the puck. Right. And he was hoping to do that a little quicker. Right. He can be in the crease uh, if he's got the puck or yes. no? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yes. But you can't do I got you. You, right. you cannot be in the crease without the puck. Got it. And the puck has to precede you. Right. So here, here comes here comes Benilde again on the offense. Oh, Noss with another shot. Oh, good chance for Patrick Graham. Right. Jungles kept again. It in. Jungles over to Fleming. Fleming's had uh, points the last two, three games in a row. Mm -hmm. Patrick Graham plays a really steady, steady defense back yes. there. He's just keeping the puck yep. Right, right, yep. right in the offensive zone. What a fabulous kid. So I, had him, I had him in class. And I, I just found him to be just quiet and yep. um, respectful and polite. I and, see. Him. Um, and as no, a captain, no, no, waved off. Um, okay. He has been a great influence on the younger guys. Yep. Yep. Um, last year when Ben Newhouse was a uh, freshman and developed very rapidly, um, I give a lot of that credit to Patrick Graham. For really? really? Yes, for really mentoring him and teaching him the five points of the game. So it's really important if your team's going to have a good season to win that you need to have really good senior leadership. Yep. Yep. No, I, I see that uh, watching the, the soccer teams this year and the Oh, oh look at great this. lead pass. Dan Lebowski to, <laughs> to, to no. Grant Bessie. Bessie with the goal. <laughs> so wow. These two are extending their lead. Bessie leading the, the leading the 2A state players in goal scoring. And Daniel Lebowski with his 33rd assist leads the state. <laughs> you know, that, that is a patented uh, Trey Riddle play. I've seen Riddle come out of the penalty box and do that <laughs> so many times. Yep. Now, you need the ability to have great vision and see the entire yes. ice. Yes. To do that. Which, which is the, the thing uh, younger kids are coached to. You can't keep your eye on the puck. You have to keep your eye on the, on the ring. That's right. Five fifty five thirty six left in the game. What becomes an insurmountable lead in hockey? Well, four maybe. Yeah, it gets really tough. Um, it depends when you're uh, when you're behind that far. If it's four in the first period, you still have a lot of time. Right. Um, but in the third period, um, if uh, one team is leading by six goals or more. Then you go to running time, right. and that right. becomes really insurmountable. Right, right then. Right. It's just a matter of time there. <clears throat> but I, I noticed uh, Coach Pauly when uh, after the St. Thomas game, he said they were up two nothing at the uh, at the end of the first period. They St. Thomas. Yeah. And uh, he said, "Boy, you know that that's tough because then all of a sudden you have to get three in order to be yes. be back in the game again." Well, it's tough against St. Thomas Academy, who, <laughs> who has David uh, Zevnik in goal, who's one of the very best goaltenders in the state. And they play a very defensive game and do a lot of trapping in the neutral zone as well. So against certain teams like that, yep. it's really hard to come from behind. Yep. St. Thomas is going to double A next year? They are. Good move? It's a very good move. Um, it's it, They should have done that a number of years ago. You know, they've won three of the last four yep. state um, class A, yeah. 1A championships, and they're extremely competitive. Yes. They just beat Shattuck St. Mary's Dead day. in uh, overtime. <clears throat> wow. Um, Shattuck plays both uh, St. Thomas Academy and Benilde St. Margaret's. I think, I think the Benilde St. Margaret's game is the uh, first week of February, as I recall. Yes, it's coming up um, on February 6th. February 6th at the St. Louis Park Rec Center. Come down. Oh. Come, come down. You don't want to miss that you one. You don't want to miss that one. I remember one year uh, um, BSN played Shattuck and there was a kid named Sidney Crosby on the ice. Oh, yes. <laughs> Great. No, yeah, it'll have to whistle on that one because yeah. he, he was the hand last pass. guy to touch, right? He's going to hand pass on that one. Seth, Seth Chumley had a nice opportunity there, had a nice shot, but, but again, very nice save by yeah. uh, Rochester's Eric Rolander. So Spencer Noss to take the face off for Benilde St. Margaret's. This is it. 
And that's a rare up. That's a rare occasion. Yeah. Offsides. So with 3.48 remaining in the first period, Benel St. Margaret's leads Rochester Century 2-0. Fifteen is Peter Himbolt. Yep. With the with the puck. And here comes Jungles. Spencer here comes Noss the Jungles. Here comes Jungles. Oh boy. In, oh, here's an opportunity for Rochester. Mm, yes or no. And Paul Lundberg makes yep. the save. The Rochester Century had a good opportunity there. They did. They did. And I mentioned before the game that most of the century players are sophomores. Uh, I think he said uh, 14 of his of his 20 are, are sophomores. So wow. it, and they lost 12 last year, 12 seniors, and they're just in a rebuilding year. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really important. I mean, you have to go through the lumps, but boy, oh boy, there's a yes. There, there, there's a there's a lot of good things that can happen. Jungles. Here we go. Pass. Jack Lawton. Lawton is number three, he's a sophomore. Benel's kind of having a hard time getting out of their defensive end here right now. Noss comes back to get the puck. Are these tough games to prep for in terms of, uh, you know, our record is so good and their record is so bad, or do you have to do you have to assume that anybody can beat anybody? Well, you do, but but it's just a natural human thing. Oh, nice play. Oh, beautiful wrap -around. Nice, nice play. Spencer Noss took took that puck, went around behind the net and tried and tried the wrap around. And again, Eric Rolander comes up big. Good for him. Chris Hickok had that play against uh, Burnsville earlier in the season, just wrapped it right around, and the goalie just did not have a clue. He was watching for the pass yes. in the slot. And Eugene Moore completely. winning the faceoff there. Well, Moore wins most of his faceoffs. Yes. I think he, re he, re he wins probably about 55, 60% of his faceoffs. Mm -hmm. so. Then Newhouse with the puck. Here it is, Grant Bessie behind the net. Nick right. Austin, a freshman, 25. No icing waved nope. off. 202 left in the period. Oh. And the puck comes out of the zone, so Nick Austin goes back to retrieve it. And Benilde reloads. Bessie cross ice pass to Lebowski. <laughs> and back, back to, to Bessie. Bessie. Oh, <laughs> nice, nice block by the Rochester defenseman there. The defenseman knew he, <laughs> yeah. he knew he was going down on that one. Uh, he'll remember that shot for a while. <laughs> Bessie has an exceptionally hard shot. Yes. And it's one that you really uh, have to think about blocking. Yes. More with the puck, drop, a drop pass to Lebowski. Patrick Graham, 17, backpedaling, backpedaling. Up to Moore. One minute, one, minute, one minute left of the period. It's been waved off. The icing's been waved off. A change of, We're change get of a likes change for the here. Red Knights. The minute to go. You okay with a two point lead going in? I think so. Obviously, I would think the the Red Knights have dominated the period. Well, they have, and you know this is not 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 one of their top periods. Um, right. It's it's hard for a coach to to get everybody to uh, to really get up for every game, especially right. when when on paper right. Right. Uh, you're playing perhaps a little lesser opponent. I, I think having finals makes a big difference too. Yes, it does because it's a college prep school. Yes, and kids are thinking about their about their tests and how you know mm -hmm. what their GPA is going to look like and, and in a sense the hockey is a distraction so they have to be able to 
prioritize what's going on. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. At the end of the first period, Benil St. Margaret's with two. Rochester Century with zero. We'll be back in the second period, and we'll let you know how many shots on goal we had and things along that line. Michael Hawkins, along with John Lebowski. We'll see you in the second period. Just a reminder, kids who participate in high school activities tend to go a little farther than those who don't. Take part. Get set for life. Well, welcome back to the St. Louis Park Rec Center. We just finished the first period and we're about to start the second period. Benilde St. Margaret's leads Rochester Century two to zero. Some stats in the first period. Um, Rochester Century um, goalie made 19 saves. So Benilde St. Margaret had 21 shots. On the other hand, Rochester Century had five shots. So shots really were 21 to five. And on face-offs, Benilde St. Margaret's won 13 of the 20 face-offs. So it was, a, it was a first period that was pretty well dominated by, by uh, Benilde St. Margaret's, but the score is just two to zero as we begin the second period. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Michael Hawkins. I'm joined by John, John Lebowski, and we're ready to start the second period of play. Something's going on. Okay, here we go. T.J. Moore's in the middle, and T.J. Moore makes, uh, picks up. There he got it again. 55 to 60 percent of the faceoffs are his. Patrick Graham, do you have any idea, John, uh, if anybody's following more? Or is he going to have to play juniors, or is he going to bypass yes, it juniors. completely? Dan Lebowski with Dan, the shot. Oh, and the goalie oh. lost track of it. The goalie made that save. Yep. Wow. Go ahead. Made a nice rush, went right in on the goaltender, pretty much unimpeded. Tried to go to the backhand, but the goalie went down. And stop, stop that. T.J. Moore again, for looking for the faceoff. Kicks the puck over. Oh, bad. Those shots are really coming in from Bessie, aren't they? Wow. Bessie keep, keeps it in the zone. Now it goes out of the zone. Scramble for the puck. <laughs> More to Lebowski, over to, to Bessie. Bessie behind the net. Picked up by Sentry. Looks like Sentry's going to keep it. Mm -hmm. Around behind the net, then they have to, Lebowski's in on him. No, no, it's still, it's still in the zone. Yep. Still in the zone. Keep it in. <clears throat> Patrick Graham under fighting for it. TJ Moore right behind him. Bessie comes into the mix. Out of, out of the zone. They're getting more physical, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, the Century is. Well, Century is a very young team, as you said, Nick. But they're game. They're game, and they're working hard. Yeah. What do we got? Uh, face up. Yeah, 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 uh, I see. Okay, back to back to TJ Moore. And I asked you the question mm -hmm. if anybody's following him, and do you know? Yes. Um, uh, there's schools that are interested in TJ, but he doesn't have any commitments yet. Gotcha. Um, so it's it's rare that players get commitments while they're uh, before before they graduate from gotcha. high school. Okay. Even though you hear a lot about right. them, right, right, because the ones that do you hear a lot about. Right. Um, but don't say Margaret has just two players who have signed national letters of intent to play Division One hockey. Right. But, but there will be more. Right. Um, but the more typical path is that after high school, you go into juniors and right. you play one or two years of juniors, and that's where most of the colleges, gotcha. even colleges at the Division two and three levels, recruit right. from. I went uh, I went out to Aberdeen about a month ago and watched Jay Horton play. Yes. And um, Steinhausen, Patrick Steinhausen, and they happened to be playing Minot, and Jacob Orski was playing for Minot. So I yes. saw three of the graduates <laughs> at the same game. You know, it was really something, though, John. I, I was really sort of disappointed in the play of the juniors, uh, and maybe it's because I'm, I'm used to the high-quality play here. 
But um, we are we are watching really spectacular hockey here uh, in the junior level. There's a lot of a uh, lot of fighting, pretty lot lot of hacking yeah. around. And yeah. I, I thought this is not the beauty of the game that that I'm used to. That's right. That I'm used to watching for sure. You're, yeah. <clears throat> You're seeing top top teams in Minnesota that play a very skilled game. Yes. Um, yes. When, when players have speed and skill. Um, it still can be physical, but you right. don't have the fighting side in that. Right. And players aren't trying to hit people for the sake of hitting them. I thought the other side, the other thing that I, I did not like very much was it's a, if it's a, a family sport, then obviously the fighting doesn't doesn't make any right. sense. But uh, there are lots and lots and lots and lots of drinking. Uh, they were selling yeah. cans of beer and, and yeah. I think, oh boy, how is this a family event? Yeah. So uh, this, I, I think, really truthfully, um, I'm spoiled wat watching yes. BSM play uh, as many years as I've been watching them. They're just one quality year after another. Yes. It's a very good hockey program. Give a lot of credit to Ken Polly for that. Mm. Mm. So this scrum behind Rochester Century's net. Benil continues to put pressure on. Back to Nick Austin in the defensive end. You know, there's something else too. I hadn't thought about. There was not one penalty in the first period, was there? No. Boy, oh boy, what no. a... Which is great. Yep. Lots of good skating, lots of good hitting, lots of good maneuvering. Love the strategy. There we go. Come on. Daniel taking a shot and giving the more. No. Nope. Patrick Graham misses it. Comes out. Okay. Bessie. Oh, back to Lebowski. Oh, babe. TJ Moore. Not quite there. Nope. Peter Himbolt, number 15 on the ice. Oh, boy. Oh, another, another nice. Yep. Pass the Bessie couldn't he couldn't quite no nope. do it there. This is a starting line or should be uh, this is the number one line on yep. offense and on defense for the Red Knights. Yep. No, we have an offside, so we'll yeah we, we'll change lines here. Twelve thirty. Oh, wait a minute, though they're moving back here for some reason. Mm -hmm. They just put the face off here. Ah, there with twelve thirty one <clears throat> remaining in the second period, the Nilt St. Margaret's leads Rochester Century two to zero. Spencer Noss going after that face off at center ice. Mm. Okay, the, the whistle blows and we have a, and we have a, let's see. Oh, we got a penalty. Penalty Benil St. Margaret's number four, Johnny Austin. Johnny Austin for two minutes, 12 12 on the clock. My partner in crime here, John Lebowski, is lining up uh, our, our next guest for, the, for an interview, and, and he'll join you in a second. The Notre Dame Margaret penalty on Johnny Austin, so Rochester Century goes on the power play here. With, with 12 minutes remaining in the second period. Oh, great shot. Paul Lundberg comes up big with the save. It's my pleasure now to introduce to you, for a quick interview during the game, Jack Jablonski. How are you doing? Very good. Jack, as you all know, the Notre Dame Margaret player and has been an inspiration for this team and really helped to lead it to a, to a state championship last year. Jack, what do you think about the game so far? Uh, it's been a pretty good pace. Um, obviously, we've gotten uh, quite a few chances in there. Uh, goalies keeping them in there, so uh, so far so good for us. Our uh, penalty kill has been, has been pretty good um, this year, and we've scored eight shorthanded goals and almost another. And no, what do you think, Jack? The net was off, I think. I disagree, but... Uh. No. <laughs> uh-huh. So, so, Jack, what do you think about uh, Benilde St. Margaret's season so far? 
Um, it's uh, definitely been up and down. Uh, we've definitely picked it up in the uh, last few games here. Uh, a few big wins in the last uh, two weeks. Uh, so uh, it's just a matter of finishing out the season and uh, getting hot before the uh, sections come up. Yes, and be ready to play in the sections. Now, Jack, um, we have on Saturday a great opportunity for Hockey Day in Minnesota to play on the ice, outdoor. Here's Dan Lebowski with the puck, skating up ice. Oh. Whoa. There we go. It's a goal. What a pass. Wow, how about that? That, that was Lebowski and Spencer Noss as forwards on that penalty kill. Um, Jack, uh, what do you think about playing on outdoor ice up at Lake Pokegama in Grand Rapids? Um, it's definitely uh, a great opportunity for uh, the guys just to get a great experience in for the game. Uh, I mean, obviously the game originated uh, out in, uh, outdoors on the ponds and the lakes. So uh, it's great to bring the game back outside and uh, just celebrate the game. Yeah, it's a, gr it's a great, great experience for, for the team and everyone associated with it to be able to have an opportunity like that which will be state, state, statewide television. So it's a lot, a lot of memories. Yeah, it's definitely uh, going to be a great time. And uh, obviously, I know the guys are looking forward to it, just as uh, the coaches and I are. Uh, so uh, we're definitely going to have a good time this weekend. And uh, just Oh, what a pass. Excuse me, Jack. Oh! oh! Lebowski made a great pass to Spencer Noss and it almost scored again another shorthanded goal. But the goalie for Rochester Century made a wonderful stop. Yeah, he's definitely uh, kept him in the game. Uh, and uh, I mean, obviously, without him, uh, the score would be a, a lot better than uh, no. 3 to 0 right now. So, yes. Uh, they definitely can pat him on the back at the, the end of today. Absolutely. Um, Jack, what do you think about Paul uh, Lundberg getting his first varsity starting goal today? Uh, he's definitely uh, come up with quite a few big saves. Uh, early on in the game, they got quite a few good chances. And, um, oh, breakaway here. 3 on 0, I believe. Here we go. 3 on 0. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, Jack, thank you. Thank you for the interview. I'm going to oh, turn, yeah. it, turn it back over to uh, Mr. H Mr. Hawkins. Thanks, John. Thanks so very much. That was a great interview. Thanks uh, to Jack as well. Jack Jablonski, the inspiration of uh, many, 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 many people. At this point in time, the um, faceoff is going to be down uh, in the neutral zone, but down on the Red Knights side. Pretty interesting. The Red Knights almo almost had uh, two shorthanded goals in that second period. Uh, one was waved off. It got hit. It hit the post, and then it was waved off. And the other one was uh, obviously the shorthanded goal by by Nass. Thanks for the interview, John. That was a great interview. Yes, I hope that all of you in the audience out here appreciate that by for Jack. Um, he's a very courageous, courageous player who's been an inspiration for so many people. Not a penalty on the ice here. And we'll, just, we'll see what the call is. There, there was a lot of furious action there. Uh, Benilte Margaret has a great uh, penalty kill team. And uh, they've scored nine uh, shorthanded goals this year to their opponents have scored only one. Shorthanded goals, of course, were the name of the game during the state tournament. When uh, the yes. championship game. You yes. know, I, I, I still remember that. That was a fantastic game, but I still remember the... Um, the game prior to that when uh, the Dinah, there it is, oh, nope. Two great shots. Benel yep. St. Margaret's with 9.18 left in the second period. Benel St. Mar Margaret's is now on the power play and we've had two great shots. Now the, the way I saw them, the, the, re, the uh, practicing for the power play, let's see if it happens. And the girls uh, hockey team is doing the same thing. They have the most powerful uh, slap shot, I thought. And they put that person right smack dab in the middle on the blue line and see where it goes. And what have we got here? This looks like. We're going point to point with nope. the passing. Dan Good. Lebowski Kept with it the, in. Very nice stop. Wow. That's that baseball experience here. <laughs> it's like a shortstop. <laughs> Down low. There it is. TJ Moore. There it is. TJ Moore with the goal. Assist, fourth assist of the game from Dan Lebowski. On the power plays, four He's to nothing. Up now. to 35, huh? <laughs> up to 35. Wow. Good for him. Good for him. Good for him. 
So Benilte Margaret's now takes a four to nothing lead with 901 left in the second period. Both teams at uh, full strength and all. Panthers um, paid for that paid for that penalty. Yep, TJ Moore and Danny Lovosky, number number 27. Good job. And here we go. Oh, oh look at that. Uh-oh. I think the floodgates nice, might be open nice here. Nice rush up up the right side by Seth Chumley, the senior, and took a great shot and scored. A very nice effort and goal by by Seth Chumley. Yep. Uh, Chumley's got 14 goals for the season. Um, this looks like his, uh, no, his four, he's played 14, he's played in 14 games for the season. My mistake, I'm reading it wrong. He's got his fourth goal for the season. Back to Nate Meyer. Here we go. And Alec Bear. Oh! Wow, look at that. Great shot by Nick Austin, but yep. again, the Rochester Century goalie meets the challenge. I can't believe it's gonna be a four to one ratio in the second period, can you, for the, <laughs> no. for the shots on goal? No, Benilde is definitely stepping it up here. And it's really hard for a young team like Rochester Century to just continue to play at right. this level and keep, and keep right. up. So as the game wears on, it's uh, so what, 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 what suffers here? The motivation, or the skill level, or the energy level? Are they just getting worn down? What suffers here? Well, the energy level number one, but but all of a sudden the little things and the skill level begins to really show gotcha. itself. Gotcha. And, and the more you play, the more shifts that you play, the more that skill level comes yep. up. Here's a great Look opportunity. No, oh. off the post. That's a sec <laughs> second post shot tonight's game. Oh, Chris Hickok had a great chance there and hit it off the post. Goaltender's best friend right there. Yep. <laughs> Here's the ping. Here's Chris again. Chris playing defense in this shift? No, no, no he's, he's not. He's, okay. playing, he's playing forward. Okay. The D are Newhouse and Austin. Mm. Although Chris has played both both D and yep. forward. Look at oh. that. Oh my gosh. Good chance for Rochester Century there. Lundberg just got it on so we could get get the deflect. No goal. No uh, icing. Mm -hmm. Now the call on icing is a little bit different. You're the each. Um, at each level, is it not? My, it's my understanding that I seen here is it goes across three lines, but if somebody could have touched it first, then it would not be icing, or is that not necessarily the case? The um, icing is technically when it passes two red lines, the center, the center line and one of the goal lines. Right. Um, and the referee has the option of waving icing off if a defensive player could have got the puck before it crossed the... Uh, the second red line, but but chose not to. Gotcha. So they're not going to allow you to do that. So, but but if the if the goalie doesn't come out, uh, he's not required to. No, apparently. no, no. The goalie is not. And and typically a goalie will will uh, put his hand up to indicate to his teammates that there's a potential icing call. Gotcha. Okay. So, is the goalie can stay in the crease and in front of the goal. Right. Oh, there's look another at shot. this, man! Oh man! Oh man! The shots are coming heavy. That was Fleming with a great with a great chance for Spencer Noss with the puck. Nice pass to Jungles. Johnny Austin on D. Nice shot. Another stop. And the puck comes out. And, the, and, and Sentry is shoot is heading for the bench. Yeah. They're making some quick some quick line changes here. Oh, picked off a nice pass there. Here we go. Here. Nos, Look at that. Nos, Look at this. back, another shot. Nothing. Cut, caught Good it. Save. Nice job. Nice Glove, job. Glove save that time. I think uh, Evan Fleming is uh, is the younger brother of um, a Fleming girl who played for the for the Red Knights for three years and she started 
started varsity for three years. Wow. Margo, Margo Fleming. Okay. Plays for Gustavus this year. Bessie in the corner. The boss getting, oh, oh. There we go. Patrick Graham back on it. Okay, so here comes Bessie Graham. is Graham coming Bessie. right around. Yep. He sure can skate well. Oh, and there's a lot of speed there. But I got to compliment Rochester Century here. Their their game and they're playing well and their their uh, level of effort is still here, even though they're trailing five five to nothing. Four fifty six left in the period. Lebowski to Bessie to Moore to Bessie to Lebowski. Oh. <laughs> couldn't quite get the shot. No, he off couldn't. There. Moore, with Moore the shot. takes the swing. <laughs> Graham. Oh. Danil's really moving the puck well. Look here. at that. Oh. There you go. TJ Moore. That's another another goal from Moore from Lebowski again. We've seen that before. <laughs> Six to nothing now. Benilde St. Margaret's leading with 4.30 to go in the second period. So, Mick, if the score continues this, this way, we would go to running time in the right. third period. Right, you are. Mercy law, mercy rule. It's mercy rule in basketball. There's mercy rule in football, mercy rule in hockey. Is there one in baseball? Yes. There yes. is. What ten, is it? Ten. Ten runs. Ten in the After fifth five. or ten? Five. Okay. Okay. That only makes sense. <laughs> Boy, that's great. What a, what a, more Lebowski Graham, beautiful. Three senior, three of the four senior yep. co-captains co, co helping on the, to score that goal. You know, I don't have any idea. How many, how many seniors are on this team? Do you have any idea? Yes, we have eight. Eight, okay. Eight seniors and four of them are captains. Yep. And of the eight, two are, <laughs> The two goaltenders are seniors. Yes, that's right. You're absolutely right. As well as Seth Chumley and Chris Chris Hickok. Yep. Here we go. They're moving the puck well. Nick Austin with the shot. Nice save. Nice save by Rohrlander. It was a, it was a nice pattern too, wasn't it? They, mm -hmm. he's, he's standing in the, right in the middle. Very nice puck movement. Yep. Very fast puck movement. Newhouse to Bear. Another nice save. Yep. I think I got to compliment the goaltender here, Eric, uh, role, role leader from uh, Rochester Century. He's made save after save here, and he's he's hanging in there. It's pretty strange when the score is uh, six to nothing to think, well, the goalie's really not doing much of anything. But the reality of it is, it could be twelve to nothing without right. without the blink of an eye here. Yeah, you'll have to evaluate him based on the saves. He's yes, making. yes, and the quality of his play. Hickok in the center. Chris Hickok taking the face off. And nothing. They waved it off. <coughs> well, uh, num number three for the Red Knights, Jack Lawton coming in. Nice shot by Lawton. Lawton's a sophomore. Chris Hickok in the, into the mix. Puck goes into the corner. Zach Hale there. Defending. Number nine. So the fourth line is up there for the Red Knights. Fourth night will be, first fourth line looks like they're going to be replaced by the set, uh, second line. So we had an icing call. So the puck will come all the way down into the offensive zone for for a Benil St. Margaret's. The second line comes out, and Spencer Noss, the center, will take the face off to Fleming. Is Century getting chippy now? No, no, no I don't think so. Okay. They're, just, they're just playing hard. Okay. I was, I was watching 21 there and thinking, man, he's doing, he's doing a lot of push in there. And well, they got, you know, they're trying to do anything to, yeah. to, to hang in there. Right, right. 
But it's a good, it's a good. Oh, oh nice man, oh shot. man, 15. Woo. Peter Himboldt. Yes, that's his second goal. Um, young freshman defenseman from Minneapolis. He scored against St. Thomas Academy, was his first goal, and that's his second of his varsity career. From the way he's playing, it's not going to be his last either, is it? No. <laughs> Red, Red Knights have got their first line out there now. 2.20 left on the clock. Second period. T.J. Moore. Patrick Graham. Grant Bessie. Back, backhanded pass. Moss got the assist on that last goal. And here comes Benilde St. Margaret's with a rush. Bessie with Look the puck. at that. To Moore. Oh, goal. Right down in the middle. Goalie just man, got oh a stick man. on that one. The goalie's just got to have heart failure because he, he knows uh, Bessie's reputation and he sees him coming across. And is he going to shoot or is he going to pass or what is he going to do? Patrick Graham. Well, and those, those, those shots from Bessie tend to be lasers. <laughs> <laughs> Moore takes a shot, skating. The goalie has no idea where the puck there is. It's a lot of pressure that Benilde is putting yes. on right now. 115 on the clock. Bessie goal. with the puck. To Lebowski. Not quite. Nope. And we got a and they clear. icing. There we go. <clears throat> icing, 106. 7 to 0. Third period should be a running clock. So now for Benilde, um, Alec Bear will take the faceoff. And Chum look at that! Wow, Chumley and Meyer on his wings. Yep. Jack Lawton in on defense, number three. Number four, Johnny Austin in on defense. Bear with the puck. Nice shot. Nice shot Top. for sure. Look Another at that. Shot. Nice. Oh, nice rebound from, from Austin. Almost mm -hmm. picked it up. Mm. Benilde is not giving up. I mean, they're not they're not letting up here, even right. though they have a 7-0 lead. Well, he's he's got his starters out there and they're they're playing every fourth or fifth shift now, but yes. that, 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 that's that's appropriate. That's what's supposed mm -hmm. to happen. Yes, I don't, I, I don't think Mick that you'll see their first line out much in the, in the third. Right. And there's an icing call. The, um, it's really important to have the younger players get the playing time and the intensity against a good team, even realizing that you know, the game may be out of, out of hand, but it's still important to, to have the, the ice time out there. Absolutely, it's quality time. So 10 seconds remaining. Zach Hale now at center for Benilde St. Margaret's to take, to take this face off. Hickok and Duda on the wings. Lawton and Johnny Austin on D. There he is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the second period. Benil St. Margaret's was seven. Rochester Century, zero. And we'll be back in the third period. Michael Hawkins along with John Lebowski. We'll see you in the third. This isn't Madison Square Garden. These drills probably won't make anyone a number one draft pick. But these players are practicing for something important. While they work on their jump shots, they're also learning teamwork, discipline, self-confidence, how to deal with wins and losses. Skills that will make them winners long after they leave the court. Support high school activities in your community. Because when kids take part, they get set for life. Well, welcome back to the St. Louis Park Rec Center. We're about to start the third period of tonight's game. The Don't Say Margaret's has a 7-0 lead over Rochester Century. Before we start the third period, a few stats. Shots on goal through the first two periods for Benilde St. Margaret's, 49, and Rochester Century, 8. And uh, face-offs, uh, Benilde St. Margaret's has won 24, and Rochester Century, 20. 
So what does this mean, that they are getting better at the face-offs or we are having the younger, younger, less experienced kids in there more often? Yes, um, both. Um, we're going to see a lot of the younger players will, uh, will, will come out. We'll probably start with their first. Benilde will start with the first, the first line, and then I don't think you'll see them much. This third period will be running time because Benilde has a seven-goal lead. When you're ahead by more than six, it goes to running time. So the third period will go by. And we should mention quickly, T.J. Moore, number 23 for the Red Knights, a hat trick. Oh, and Dan Lebowski, number 27, five assists so far. And we're off. The behind the Red Knight goal. <clears throat> and it is the first line. Bessie, Lebowski, Moore came across to Bessie. Oh. Bessie shot. Shot went a little wide. Yep. Reload. Here they come. The kids can skate so well, and both teams, the kids can skate so well. It's a fun game to watch, Mick. It is. Um, and I, I love the beauty of it. I love the beauty of the strategy. I love the beauty of the ability. How often do, uh, how often do uh, hockey players get their... There it is. Oh, what a shot. Bessie. Grant Bessie with a rocket. Off both poles, and there he is. <laughs> that was a rocket shot. That's Bessie's uh, second goal of the game. And again, as you know, he leads the state for 2A players in goal scoring. Yep. How often do, uh, how often do players get their skates sharpened? I would say you can skate on them about four times, and that's about it. Um, four games or four times, like four practices? Four times. Really? Okay. Four times. Practices are harder than, than games. The assist on the last goal that Bessie had went goes to Jack Lawton, number three. Dur during the games, Mick, remember, you're only playing every third or fourth yes. shift. Yes, yes. Um, so you're maybe on the ice for 15 minutes. Yes. Um, in practices, it might be an hour and a half. Yes. And you're constantly going. Yep. So I would say maybe three practices and... Or maybe... You know, and, and, each, and each sharpening takes off how much of the blade? Takes off a little of bit. An inch or yes, well, well, not not quite that much. Um, you can go probably one season, um, and you have to to replace uh, replace your blades. Really? Oh yes. Um, you need new blades because the blades get worn down to such an extent that they can't really sharpen them too right. much anymore. Right. Right. Then right. you lose uh, you lose your edges. And if a kid's skating on dull blades, is it obvious? Yes. Okay, they're just, they can't stop, they can't turn, they're, they're, That's just, right. nothing's as crisp. If the ice is soft, because it's warm, uh -huh. then the doll skates aren't that bad. But if the ice is really, if it's really cold and the ice is hard, then then you have problems. Yes. So we got the second line out there for the Red Knights. And again, and uh, Benilte Margaret's leads this game 8 to 0 with 14 minutes to go of running time. We yeah. should mention, Mick, uh, while we have a break here, Good. Um, that, that Benilde St. Margaret's is getting ready to go tomorrow. They're finishing their finals. And then they would leave, and they're bussed up to Grand Rapids, Minnesota, staying up there overnight. And they're going to play outdoors <laughs> at 1 o'clock on Saturday afternoon <laughs> on television on Hockey Day in Minnesota, which would be a real thrill for the kids. On and Lake, what, and how, Lake how will people follow that on, on cable and on and on satellite. Pretty much everybody gets the Fox, is, is, Fox it M, is it MSN or is it? Um, yes. Um, it's on Fox Fox Sports Network. Okay, good enough. Okay, Fox Sports North then. Okay. Yes. Good. Which is, they're also televising that game. Uh, there's a game before the Vanilla game, a high school game. And then they go to the Gopher North Dakota game at four. Wow. And then they go to the Wild playing their initial game of this year. Wow. Finally against the Colorado Avalanche. Wow. And so, it's going to be minus zero, zero, zero <laughs> degrees. So it's a perfect day to just to sit on the couch, isn't it? It is. So stay home. Oh. Um, watch hockey all day long. Oh, fabulous. What fun. What fun for everybody.
And it's a great experience for for the players to talk about this. Yes. Um, and Benilde has new um, hockey jerseys that are retro and go back to the time when Benilde wasn't quite merged with St. Margaret's yet. No kidding. And uh, um, it goes back to similar jerseys to what they wore back then. <laughs> fabulous. That's fabulous. How long has Ken Pauly been the coach here anyway? Any idea? He has been a, a head coach now 25 years. Wow. And all but three mm -hmm. years um, at Benilde St. Margaret's. Those three years at Tonka? Yes. Gotcha. Will, you know, the, will the kids appreciate playing on the um, in the cold, or will they? You know, they will appreciate the overall experience of yes. it. Yes. Because this is something, how often do you get on statewide television? Right, exactly. How often right. do you, can you play outdoors? Right. Um, this is really a thrill that they're, and it's memories that they're going to have. Yes. Now, it would be my impression, do, will they have two warming houses or one warming house for both teams? Um, they're going to actually dress, I think, at, at the Grand Rapids High School, and then after the game's over, they're going to shower there. How about between periods? Where do they oh, go? Uh, they have a warming tent. For but is for it them one, to talk. Is it one tent for each? No. Yes. Oh, okay. Y yes. Separate tents. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly in the old days, so when when it was. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, you'd have a warming house, and the <laughs> the kids would come in, and one team would sit on one side of the warming house, and the other the other, and the refs would sit down in the middle, and then they'd. Oh, that, that there, will there be a Zamboni on Saturday? Yes. I wonder. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. And, you know, it's going to be cold, but the positive side of that is that the ice should be good. Oh, fabulous. Because they try to do Hockey Day in Minnesota each year now, and, uh, and they try to and have a game outdoors on the ice. But it's been pretty warm, and uh, yes. one year when it was supposed to be on Lake uh, Minnetonka, they actually had to move it indoors. Yes. Uh, be uh, because the ice was not good enough. Yep. I remember that. Yep. It's a compliment to be chosen and to be rep to re represent, isn't it? It is. It's a real, it's a real thrill. And er, I, I should also so, uh, mention that earlier this year, the Nilton Margarets went on a northern trip, and they played Duluth Marshall up at uh, Mars Arena, and they were met by John Mayasich, who's, oh, a, who's wow. a hockey great. Yep, that's and, a name uh, for he sure. Came, he came to see him. They they were bussed after the game to Eveleth, where, where they spent the night, and then John Mayasich took them on a personal tour <laughs> of the U.S. Hockey <laughs> Hall of Fame up there, and took them to the Hippodrome, <laughs> and they were so thrilled to learn about <laughs> the history of hockey in Minnesota. That is phenomenal. And I have to say, part of that, Mick, is that um, when you have a teacher like Ken Polly, who teaches history, yep. who is your coach, yep. um, he's a teacher first. Yep. Puts it in the perspective then. It, he does, and, and he's very interested in having the players learn and to understand and put things in perspective and have a, a sense and appreciation of history. Yep. How old would Mia Sech be? In his mid-80s, maybe? I'd say about 80. Yep. He looks, he looks very good. And he Look was, at this. Oh, wow. Not much of anything. That was a quick very, backhand. Very nice. Zach goal. Hale? Uh, Spencer Noss. Spencer Noss, right. Spencer Noss with that. Spencer has a great backhand. He is really wicked, and it's especially effective because goalies really aren't expecting you right. to shoot with a backhand like that. Because the blade is turned. Mm -hmm. So really, developing a backhand is, is, is oh, a really good. good move. It's very good. That's really nice. Nas is a freshman? Uh, Nas is a junior. He's a junior. Okay, yes. got it. Great player. He's number three on the on the uh, Red Knights in scoring. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. And here's Patrick a Graham. shot from Patrick Graham. Yeah. All I want to do now is watch the clock run down, I think, don't you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See, um, the score is currently Benote Margaret's 9 and Rochester's Century 0. And we have eight minutes remaining on the clock, and it is running time. So that Kale is 9. He just centered that.
Well, it's interesting because I'm sure that uh, Pauly did not schedule Century because they're going to be a, a pushover team. Uh, in the past, again, their history has been that they, like last mm -hmm. year, for instance, they were the leading leading school in the Rochester area. Yes. So, you know, it, it's it's fair to it's fair to schedule them. It's legit to schedule oh, them yes. just without knowing again from year to year. Yes, and that it's strange how that happens, but they lost a lot of seniors. Yeah. Last year they had a very senior laden team. Yep. And so this year is a bit of a rebuilding year, but I believe that they have been um, to the state tournament two or three times in the last decade. Yes. So That's exactly correct. Representing section one. Was it a good move in your estimation to leave the conference and to go independent as the Raiders have, as the Red Knights have done? I think so, because in any conference, half your games are going to be relatively easy. Right. And half are going to be really hard. And in the North Suburban, you know, it's a good conference, but... Not, we, it's not a good hockey conference. Right. I mean, I mean, we would always have have a number of really easy ga games. Um, which didn't really help either right. team so much. Right. So, so, so for Benilde St. Margaret's, I think playing independent is really the way to go, and designing a schedule like Ken Polly has done will really spur on the development of these of these players. And it's it's not just focused on the Metro. He has so many right. outstate teams. Right. right. Um, Duluth, Tonight's an example. Hibbing, yes. Grand Rapids, yes. Um, Moorhead, yes. Um, the uh, two teams from Rochester. I mean, it's really a uh, all. An all-state Minnesota schedule. When that, um, when they do that, and the record turns out the way to be the way it does, does that not hurt them in their seedings for the section, or not necessarily? Not necessarily, because because I think when they do seeding, they they take your strength of schedule into consideration. Ah, okay. Uh, now you are going to lose, you are going to lose a few games. It uh, doesn't matter how good you are. Um, last year, Manil's record was 25 and six. Yep. Even though they won the state championship, they still lost six. Yep. Um, but those losses help you early on because you probably learn more from a loss than you do from a win. Gotcha. And Ken Polly would be the first to tell you as a coach that your players are much more coachable after a loss <laughs> than a win. After a win, we know it all, huh? Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh. So, so, so it doesn't bother you at all, the, no. the, the four losses that, that the Red not Knights have? Um, not at all. Um, but when you get to the sections, it's a whole different story right. because then it's single elimination. Oh, great setup pass, great shot, and score. Has to be, and that would be that Jungles? That Jungles, yep. yes. Number 11. Yes, and I own Newhouse who's going to have one of the assists on there. That was a nice effort here. That was a really nice effort. And you, and you know that the shot really went in there when the water bottle pops. <laughs> Yes, top shelf on that shot. Yes, very nice. Now again, Benilde, um, their first line is not playing anymore. Um, so they are they are spectators. Yep. And uh, to play primarily the, the third and fourth lines and giving them a lot of experience here. And uh, actually a really important thing is to have, uh, otherwise you, you don't want your first line to get hurt in a meaningless right. game. And so there's yes. no purpose to... I was at the um, boys basketball game on uh, Tuesday, it must have been, and Red Knights played Cooper, and Cooper just kept running the score up, running the score up, running the score up. They won by probably 25 or 30. And I asked um, one of the spectators, what the heck is this all about? He says, you forget last year, the Red Knights had 100 points on us. <laughs> ah. Okay. So we're, <laughs> yeah. we're trying to get some respectability back. <laughs> Chris Hickok, nothing. Yeah. Mm. Good try. Mm. So right now, it's uh, there's three minutes and 40 seconds left in the game. The no leads 10 to nothing. Um, but it's a time for the younger players right yes. now. This yes. is their time. Yeah. And each one of them has to do it. I mean, you have to get the time in. You simply have to. Mm -hmm. they've, they've had enough time with bantams and squirts and peewees and all that business, and now, now it's this. And it's a real privilege to play high school hockey in Minnesota. Yes. And this is, this is their chance to play. And especially if you're on that the third or fourth line. Yes. You want to move up. You want to show the coaches what you can do. Yep. One of my uh, grandsons plays... Um, Hmm. Squirts, and um, even even there, I see 
the parents are, are all a big fraternity. Mm -hmm. And and I, I, I knew it, but I didn't understand it when a, when a Red Knight, uh, or I guess any coach, uh, cuts a senior. There it is again, right? Yeah, yep. beautiful. Yep, it weren't, but that was a beautiful pass. All yeah. It just went right across, all three of them. Yep, that was... Uh, Tumbley. Tw 28, I think, scored Nate Meyer. Oh. Okay. Again, a backhand. Yep. Um, we'll, have, we'll have to listen to the call here. Yep. Again, two minutes, 26 seconds left in the game. Now 11 nothing, Benil St. Margaret's. Yep. Um, what you find as a parent, um, I guess in any sport really, that your social network yes. revolves around the team yes. and, and other parents. Yep. Yep, you were right. Here comes uh, Hale, nothing. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a penalty there, I think. Somebody's going out for the rest of the game. And huh? for tripping. Yep. Tripping on Rochester Century. So the, going back to it then, so that, that becomes the social circle for the parents for years and years. Yes. And then uh, if, if your kid gets cut uh, as a junior or senior, it's just so devastating for the, for the kid, but also for the parents. And, it's been my experience that kids can adjust faster than the parents can. Oh, no doubt about that. No doubt. That penalty was called at number 21 for Rochester Century. Reese Zamolek, a defenseman. So, Benil St. Margaret's is on the power play. There's only, there's only a minute 15 left in the game. And you can see the scoreboard up in the yep. right of your screen. Up in here. the corner, yep. This has been a pretty penalty-free game. There's oh, been it's a been few, a very nice many. game. Not many. Nothing serious. Um, it's not their questionable calls, but it's called that didn't necessarily have to be made. So mm -hmm. no, it's fine. It's been it's been great. It's been again. You know, I, I just I just admire the beauty of the game so much. And two good hockey programs. Yes. Here. There it goes. Another shot by Nick Austin from the point. Austin's a freshman, 5'9", 140 pounds. Ooh, nice shot, and the goalie again comes up with a great save. Kudos to the goalie. Nothing to be ashamed of. 10 no. goals, but 11 goals, but wow, he has been peppered, peppered, peppered. So again, coming into this period, Benilde had 49 shots. <laughs> and I would guess, I don't have the exact count, but I would guess they're probably around 70 now. Yeah, it, it would appear. And, and that's, that's the game. So that's the game, ladies and gentlemen. A uh, reminder that the next game for the Red Knights is Saturday in Grand Rapids on the lake in the middle of the cold and wind and number fourth in the in the state ranked team, Benil St. Margaret's wins this evening, 11 to nothing over Rochester Century. John, you got any final comments on that? No, pleasure to be with you, Mick. Um, and uh, make sure that you uh, watch the game one o'clock on Saturday against uh, Grand Rapids Outdoor on Hockey Day in Minnesota. And uh, we'll see you back here at the St. Louis Park Rec Center for Benil St. Margaret's next game, which is January 22nd against Elk River at 7 o'clock. Ooh, it's going to be a good run. Okay, good night, ladies and gentlemen. Good night.